Okay, biology students, this is for chapter 14.1 and 14.2. We will skip over 14.3 for right now. So, we've been talking about different human genetic disorders. A genome is the full set of genetic information that exists in your DNA. I'm going to grab something here. So there was something that was started in the late uh, 1990s, early 2000s, called the Human Genome Project, in which they sequenced or figured out where the, all the human genes were located on which chromosomes. So no, I don't know if you can see that the chromosome 1's right here, 2, 3, 4, etc. Um, the gene for red hair color is located on chromosome number 4. They know exactly where it's located. So the genome is a full set of that information. Here is a, what a karyotype looks like. If we were to take a picture of the cells in your body, um, this is what it would look like. Now, not in this order. These are the chromosomes lined up in order from size. Chromosome pair number one is the biggest, and pair 22 is the smallest. And then the last pair, the 23rd pair, are your sex chromosomes. So this individual, XY, it's a male. So a karyotype is a picture of all the chromosomes in a diploid cell, meaning 46 chromosomes. If you want to write that down, you can. This slide tech compares sex chromosomes to autosomes. Autosomes are the chromosomes 1 through 22. Those are the autosomal chromosomes. These are the non-sex chromosomes. So they don't determine the sex of an individual. <laughs> uh, the sex chromosomes then are the 23rd pair. Um, they can either be X, oops, XX, and that equals a female, or XY oops, equals a male. Okay. So... I don't know if you, you yeah, you have a slide. <clears throat> so sex-linked inheritance. Any kind of um, trait that is passed on an, either an X chromosome or a Y chromosome is said to be, be sex-linked. Um, genes on a Y chromosome, males only have because they have only have the Y chromosome. An example of a sex-linked trait is color blindness. Human have, humans have three genes for color vision. And they're all located on the X chromosome. So write that in X chromosome here. If there's a mutation in any of those genes, it produces color blindness. So therefore, there's a, a few different types of color blindness. Here is an example of a Punnett square with a trait of color blindness. Um, big B equals normal color vision, and little b equals color blindness. This is X linked. We put those traits actually on the X chromosome. So this mother's genotype, she has normal color vision, indicated by the capital B, capital B, and the father has is actually colorblind. So we can write that in. Mother is not colorblind, and the father, in this case, is colorblind. So we can look at the probability of their children being colorblind or not colorblind from a genetic cross. So here we'd put x to little b, y, and over here x with a big b. Oh, I suppose I can do the format. Yeah, superscript. Change that there. Over here, same thing. So then, if we do the Punnett square, this would be X capital B, X lowercase b. You can make a superscript on your own, x, or 
I can go back and do it. Okay, so let's talk about male versus female here. XY means um, it is a fem uh, male, so 50% chance that they will have a boy, 50% chance that there will be a girl. That's the same for any kind of um, male-female match. Um, these boys would not be colorblind because they inherited a capital B allele, and these girls would just be carriers for being colorblind. You do the Punnett square down here. In this case, the mother is a carrier. So let's add that. She is a carrier. Oh, I made it little. And the father in this case is not colorblind. Not colorblind. And let's go back over here and set the front square. So we'll do the mom over here. So she doesn't, neither of them are colorblind. So what is the chances that they can have a child, boy or girl, that's colorblind? Oops. Seriously. There we go. No, wait. Crap. A little bit. But you get the idea. X, B, and Y. Pull that up. Okay. This would be a female that is not colorblind and is not a carrier. This is a female that is not colorblind but is a carrier. This would be a normal vision male, and this male would be colorblind, which is weird because up here the father was colorblind and none of the kids were colorblind. But down here, both of them weren't colorblind, but one of them uh, had one, or their children had one ch fourth chance. So X-linked is more uh, possible in males because they don't have an X chromosome to essentially block that trait or cover it up. Maybe you have to go back for this one. Human pedigrees are used to show the patterns of inheritance for a trait. And they help you determine if a trait is autosomal or sex-linked. We're going to make a pedigree in class and um, hopefully you got this assignment that I shared with you. You'll want to look over these links, tutorials, to look how a pedigree is set up before Monday or before the next time we meet where we're going to make a pedigree in class. And you'll have to pick a trait, okay? I will show you how to do a cleft chin because uh, that's the one I have in my family that runs in my family and how to set it up. You'll need to get the information from your grandma's. So if you let's say you pick freckles, ask your your mom or dad what their grand you know if their parents had freckles or no, um, and and all that information. So you need to know whether they are, you know, capital F, capital F, or lower capital F, lowercase f. And with those two, you might have to just infer or guess. You can kind of figure it out too from your pedigree. But let go get that information. Um, back to our notes here. There is an autosomal dominant pattern of um, uh, how things can be inherited. Um, having only one copy of the disease allele will make you have the disease. So an example is Huntington's disease. Um, so look at this here. The, the dad only has, let's see, he only has one copy of the defective allele. Oh, stop. Okay. But he is affected by that disease. The mother is unaffected. Okay. Their children, you can see here, this one and this one are both 
50% of them ha are likely to get the disease. And they only have one of the copies of the alleles. So in autosomal dominant, the thing to look at here is it's only having one copy of the allele will, you will have that disease. An example is Huntington's. Autosomal recessive is to express the genetic disorder, you need to inherit two copies of the defective or the recessive allele. And there's quite a few examples of these. Albinism, that's where you lack the color in your, um, your eyes, your hair. Um, cystic fibrosis, like I'm a carrier, and sickle cell anemia. So again, let's take a look at this pedigree. They're both carriers, both the mom and the dad, but they don't have the disease. But the chances of their children having it affected is one fourth chance. Two out of the four children are carriers and one child doesn't have either copies of the allele. There's also a, a pattern called sex link like I talked about before. Just like color blindness, um, hemophilia is an example of a sex linked. So it's either carried on the X or the Y chromosome and most of them are usually carried on the X chromosome. And males are more likely or more often impacted because they don't have another X chromosome to um, cover the effects of that lack of the other X gene. So, or Leo, here we see the mom is a carrier and daughter's a carrier affected son because if he gets that defective allele, he will have the genetic disorder. All right, next one. Some diseases are caused by individual genes. Hopefully you figure that out with your research project. Again, there's some examples. Sickle cell, Huntington, cystic fibrosis. Um, some diseases actually offer genetic advances, which is interesting. Individuals, if you're a carrier for sickle cell, you cannot get malaria. So if you were, like, for example, type of F, lowercase f, you cannot get malaria. That's interesting. Also, individuals that are carriers for cystic fibrosis, like myself, are less likely to get a disease called typhoid fever. Now, typhoid fever isn't very common around these parts, but it, it has been in war times. Um, that's, that's interesting that I know that. Other disorders are caused by chromosomes being defected. Here's an image that I added of something called non-disjunction that happens during meiosis. Normally, when the chromosomes separate to form the four sex cells, the four gametes, they each should receive one copy. In non-disjunction, separation doesn't happen correctly, so essentially one cell has two copies and one cell has none. Okay, so an example of this happening is Down syndrome, in which it happened to get the 21st, 21st chromosome and extra chromosome, so of two they have three. Turner syndrome, the opposite, the female only has one X. And another example is Klinefelter's, in which the male has an extra X chromosome giving him some more female characteristics. And that is it, the end of chapter 14 that we're going to go over at this point in time. Remember to get your information ready for your categories. Look over that document, and we should be ready to go for Monday if you do that.